Welcome back. In this session, I'd like to follow up on what to do after you come up with the optimal debt ratio for your company. In the sessions leading up to this, we've talked about how to come up with the optimal debt ratio for a company. You can look at the cost of capital and try to assess that mix that minimizes your cost of capital. You can use an adjusted present value approach and look at the tax benefits of debt, weigh them off against the bankruptcy costs and come up with the right mix. Or you can even compare what your company's debt ratio is relative to other companies in the sector to see if it's got too much or too little debt. But let's say you've made that assessment. In making that assessment, you can use all of these tools, but ultimately the judgment still remains with you. One of three things is going to be true. Either your company is one of those very unusual companies that is at its optimal, in which case, do no harm, let it go. Or it can be different from its optimal in one of two ways. Either the actual debt ratio is much below the optimal, in which case the company is under levered, or the actual debt ratio is well above the optimal, in which case the company is over levered. Let's use four examples to illustrate what to do once you've found that your company is not at its optimal. Here are my four companies. The first is Amgen. It's a biotechnology company, closer to being a pharmaceutical company than a biotech company in terms of life cycle, but a very profitable biotechnology company. Its actual debt ratio is about 23%. Its optimal is 50%. I use the cost of capital approach to find the optimal. American Eagle is a US retailer that sells its own and other uh, products through stores. And it's got almost a thousand stores across the country. Its actual debt ratio is about 38%. And that does include leases. And the optimal is 60%. My third company is Tesla. Tesla, of course, is the, the company that Elon Musk created that essentially makes electric cars and batteries and has been one of the stars of the, of the stock market for the last five, six or seven years. Its actual debt ratio is about 22 percent. Its optimal debt ratio is zero percent. Why? Because a company doesn't make money. So if you don't make money, it's very difficult to sustain a debt ratio. And my last company is Town Sports. It's a company that operates fitness clubs across the country. Its actual debt ratio is sky high, 81%. Its optimal is about 10%. So I have two under-levered companies, two over-levered companies. You think, what next? Your first step, the first question you need to answer is, is time your ally? What I mean by that is I'm asking how urgent is, if your debt ratio is well below what it should be or well above what it should be, you're at a, you, you, your cost of capital is higher than it should be and you're giving up values of companies. That's a problem, right? So the question I'm asking is, how quickly do I need to fix this problem? How urgent is the solution that, that's needed to fix this problem? To answer this question for under-levered question, uh, firms, the question I'm asking is, are you the, potential tra uh, are you the potential target of a hostile takeover? Think about why. If you have too little debt, it makes it easier for somebody else to take over your firm and use your debt capacity to take you over. So if you're under levered, one of the first questions I have to deal with is, if I'm, am I the target of a hostile takeover? And to answer this question, I'd suggest you look at three things. The first is the size of the company. Clearly, it's much more difficult to take over a $100 billion company than a $10 billion company, and a $10 billion company than a $1 billion company. So the first thing you're going to look at is the market capitalization of your firm the total value of your firm. The second thing you should probably look at is what percentage of the stock is held by insiders who might, who might be running the company, either a family or a founding CEO. Why? Because if the founding CEO owns 25% of the company, a hostile acquisition gets really, really difficult to do because you've got to get 51 of the remaining 75%. And the third question to ask is, how well or badly has this company's stock done in the market in the two, three, five years leading into the decision point? You're saying, why should I care? If your stock has done badly relative to the market, relative to the sector, you're much more likely to be the target of a hostile acquisition. Why? First, your stock price is low. And second, the evidence seems to indicate that when there's a fight over your company, your stockholders are much more likely to go with a hostile acquirer if your stock hasn't done well. So how big is your company? What, what percent of the company is held by insiders? And what has the stock price done over the two, three, five years leading into the decision point? If you're an over-levered company, the question of urgency is a different one. I'm not worried about being acquired if I'm over-levered. I'm worried about default and bankruptcy. I might not be able to make my next interest payment, my next principal payment. So the question I have to ask myself is, am I under threat of bankruptcy? And to answer this question, three things you could look at. If your company has a bond rating and you trust ratings agencies, you can look at the rating. And guess what? If your rating is C AA or C AA, you know, C, 
I'm going to say, look, don't, don't hang around, I mean, don't devise five-year plans. You've got to do something fast. This is an urgent problem. I'm also going to look at whether, you know, how comfortably you make your interest expenses. You know, what's your operating income? What's your interest expense? And how much cash you have relative to the debt payments that are coming due. In other words, I'm going to use the common sense that any banker uses when he looks at default risk and try to answer, should I be worried about default risk in your company? So let's look at my companies to see whether time is my ally. For my underlevered companies, here's what I looked at. The market cap inside our holdings and how well or badly the stock has done using a Jensen's Alpha. If you don't remember, a Jensen's Alpha measures how well or badly your stock did after adjusting for the market and after adjusting for risk. So if that number is a positive number, your stock did better than expected. If that number is a negative number, your stock did worse than expected. With Amgen, here's what I get. I get a big market cap, $129 billion. I get almost no insider holding, and I get a Jensen's Alpha on an annualized basis of 5.71%. You're saying, what does that mean? Well, in the, in the period, in the, in the years of the two years that leading into this process where I ran this regression, Amgen delivered whatever I'd have expected it to deliver given the market and risk, plus 5.71%. It did better than expected. With American Eagle, the market cap is much smaller, 3.2 billion. The insider holdings are more substantial, about 6%. And the Jensen's Alpha is about minus 9.69%. The stock hasn't done well in the period leading up to the decision point. With my over-levered companies, the numbers I track, with the, bond, or the, the items I track, with the bond rating, the interest coverage ratio, which is operating income divided by interest expense, and the debt as a multiple of EBITDA. With Tesla, here's what I saw. I saw a B3 rating. Not great, but not abysmal either. And the interest coverage ratio was negative. Why? Because the operating income was negative, which means that they, the, the interest expenses are being paid out of, you know, out of cash that the company already, already has. It's not being covered by operating income. And finally, debt is almost 20 times EBITDA. That's a big number. To give you a sense of reference, six times or seven times EBITDA is already a high number. 20 times EBITDA is huge. Town Sports is a CAA1. If you thought B3 was a bad rating, CAA1 is much worse. It does have enough operating income to cover the interest expense, but barely. And it has 18 times, almost 17 and a half to 18 times as much debt as it has EBITDA. Both companies are over levered, but Tesla has a better bond rating and perhaps a better you know, markets think it can improve over time. So let's the judgment I decided to make, and I'll go back to the previous page. And with Amgen, I decided that time was my ally. That was too big and doing too well to actually be taken over in a hostile acquisition. American Eagle, I didn't think time was my ally. I need to do something quickly. With Tesla, I think time is my ally, not because its bond rating is great, but because it's on an upswing in terms of growth and revenues. And people, I think, will give it time. And given its market capitalization, the, the fact that people are willing to buy into its equity, I don't think they'll have trouble getting out of the next hole they're in. Town Sports, much more trouble, has to do something quickly. So American Eagle and Town Sports, I would argue, time is not their ally. Amgen and Tesla have time on their side. If time is not your ally, you need to recapitalize. What does that mean? Well, you need to do something quickly. You can't take projects over the next five, 10 years and try to get your debt ratio into sync. And there are, and depending on whether you're undercapitalized or overcapitalized, the choices you make will be different. So let's say you're an undercapitalized company. So look towards the bottom to increase your debt ratio. Here are the things you can do to recapitalize quickly. You can borrow money and buy back stock. You're saying, what does that accomplish? Borrowing money pushes up your debt, buying back stock pushes down your equity. You can borrow money and pay a special dividend, same effect, so you can recapitalize. You could sell operating assets if you're really desperate and use those sell operate, sold operating assets, the cash from it, to essentially reduce your equity, to buy back stock. More uncommon, but you could try that. To decrease the debt ratio, you could try the same features in reverse, the same actions in reverse. You can issue new stock if anybody will buy your shares to retire some of your existing debt, or maybe try to get your debt holders to accept equity in the company. It's called a debt for equity swap. Or you can sell operating assets and use the cash to pay down debt. So if you want to do something quickly, those are your choices. For my under-levered firms, here's what I decided. I decided, as I said earlier, that Amgen is under-levered, unlikely to be a takeover target because of its large market cap and its good stock market performance. 
therefore I gave time. I didn't have to do anything in a hurry. American Eagle on the other hand is under levered, but it is a small market cap company is coming off a couple of really bad years. It does have more insider holding, 6%, but not enough to stop a hostile acquirer. So I, would, I think American Eagle will have to recapitalize and my suggestion would be to do a debt for equity swap or borrow money and buy back some stock. Maybe not to get to 60, but to 50% to 45%. It, ha it will increase its value if it does it. With my over levered firms, with uh, Tesla, I made the decision. It was over levered, but not under, threat or, not under threat of bankruptcy. Why? Its rating is B3, which is not that great, but it has growth potential. And I think it can raise equity to pay down debt if push came to shove. So I, I think that Tesla has time as it, on its side. On the other hand, with, um, with Town Sports, I don't think time is their ally. I think the company is in a bad business. It can't grow itself out of trouble. Its rating is awful. It needs to do something quickly. And there, the actions are not that great that they can take. I mean, they can try to issue stock, but who'll buy your stock? My suggestion is they start looking at shrinking as a company, getting out some of their bigger leases, the leases that are creating some of their debt and bringing down the debt ratio because that might be the only way out of the hole that they're in right now. If time is your ally, then the question you've got to ask is what kind of investment opportunities do you have? Because in a sense, if you have time to change your debt ratio, you can, you can take advantage of those great investment opportunities and you get a double whammy. Why a double whammy? Well, I mean, the definition of a good investment opportunity is you have a positive net present value, right? So when you borrow money or you raise equity to take a good project, not only are you moving towards your optimal, if you're, if you're mislevered, but you're also taking great projects. So I'm going to ask you, do you have good projects? But I'm not going to take you at your word because you could be lying. So to decide whether your, your word is good, I'm going to look at your history. If you have a history of earning more than your cost of capital and you tell me of great projects, you have more credibility than if you don't. And if you don't, then I'm going to ask you what's changed. And if you can give me a really good reason, perhaps I will believe you. So time is your ally. The question you've got to ask is, do I have good investment opportunities? And then decide the right way to use those investment opportunities. So if time is your ally and you're under levered, here are your options. If you have good investment opportunities, my suggestion is you take those good investment projects with debt, disproportionately with debt, and over time your debt ratio will go up and you'll also get the net present value of those good projects. If you don't have good investment opportunities, don't press your luck. Don't say, look, I have debt capacity, I've got to use it. You have debt capacity, you can use it. But rather than use it to take bad projects, use it to buy back stock or pay dividends because that will over time adjust your debt ratio to whatever you need it to be. So if time is your ally and under levered, look at your investment opportunities. That's going to tell you what to do next. If time is your ally and you're over levered, if you have good investment opportunities, my suggestion is that you, that you invest or you, 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 you use equity disproportionately to take those projects. You're saying, do I have to issue sh shares? Not necessarily. Remember, retained earnings is equity too. So if you're paying dividends, stop. You're over levered. Why are you paying dividends? Take that money, put it into projects, and over time your equity will grow. And as your equity grows, your debt ratio will come down. You might not have to pay off a single dollar in debt. If you don't have good investment opportunities and time is your ally, then again, you have time on your side. You can bring your equity up over time by retaining more of your earnings and, and paying down the debt because you don't have the project. Pay down the debt with your retained earnings and over time, maybe your debt ratio will come back to what it, use, what it, what it needs to be. So let's look at the, my four companies to see what kind of investment opportunities they have. Amgen is earning about 11% more than its cost of capital. That said, the healthcare business is changing. So I'm going to look at what the trend lines are in those excess returns to make the judgment on whether they're future projects, but they start off with an advantage of, we have a history of taking great projects, trust us. American Eagle is earning an excess return close to zero. That kind of reinforces the decision we already made to recapitalize right away. If they'd had time on their side, I'd have suggest recapitalizing, but over time. Tesla is earning well below its cost of capital, but I think in this case, <clears throat> looking at the excess returns last year is a little misleading. Tesla is a young growth company. Its best days are probably ahead of it. So market at least seems to think it has great, great potential. So I'm not going to pass strong judgment on the stock, but for the moment at least, it is operating with that, that freedom of taking projects because people think it can become a very valuable company. 
transports, the excess returns are negative. The company is earning below its cost of capital. The business is getting more competitive. The excess returns are going away. So Amgen and Tesla, I think, have good investment opportunities. American Eagle and Town Sports don't. And the good thing about American Eagle and Town Sports, we've already decided they need to recapitalize quickly. So it's less of an issue. But with Amgen and Tesla, I'm going to argue that they should use their, in the case of Amgen, their excess debt capacity to take those, ex, those, those good projects. In the case of Tesla, I would argue they should use primarily or predominantly equity to fund their projects. In fact, one of the things I did not understand about Tesla's borrowing is why they did it. They have great projects. They're a young company that's losing money. The market loves them. Why wouldn't you issue equity? And I did cover that in a different post, in a different video. But I think that they made a mistake. I think they shouldn't make the hole deeper. If anything, if they can raise the equity to retire the debt, I'd feel a lot better about the company. And finally, in step four, once you're at your right debt ratio, either because you're already there, you get there, you have a maintenance plan. What does that mean? Remember, your debt ratio is not the right debt ratio forever. You have to constantly revisit that number to see what happens to it and tweak it. And your actual debt ratio is also changing. Why? Because your market value of equity is changing. Remember, this is a market debt ratio and your market value of debt might be changing. So this is a dynamic, continuous process where you compare your actual to your optimal. And when you take individual projects, you want to try to keep the mix of debt and equity used to fund the portfolio of your projects, not every single project, at whatever the right mix is. So if your right mix is 70% equity, 30% debt, you want to try to stay with that mix across a portfolio of projects. Which also means that when you compute the cost of capital for an individual project, and you have a right debt ratio that you've decided, a target, use that target to come up with the cost of capital for individual projects, even though those projects might be funded with very different debt mixes. That's about all. So, but now you have at least a framework for deciding what to do after you have the optimal debt ratio of your company. I hope you found this useful. Thank you very much for listening.